Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, most merciful, most compassionate. All praise be to Allah. Peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad and all the prophets from Adam to him. Peace be upon them. Mevlana Muhammad Rumi weaves himself as a moral teacher who follows and, the, and threads the path of the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. His spiritual mission can be described as an instrument of guidance, leading people toward the truth and true path, eternal happiness in accordance with the purpose of creation. The purpose of human's creation for Mevlana is to get to know his creator and then worship him. Likewise, the purpose of the creation of the world is also to realize this worship for human being, serve for him so that he will be able to execute his God-assigned duties and uh, worship him. So, among all the creatures, according to Mevlana, only human being has the power to do service consciously for Allah Almighty. He has the power in everything, but his service, his worship, is the object of his creation, is the purpose of creation. And he says, read this verse from the Quran. I did not create the jinn and mankind, but what? To worship. So the object of the world is nothing but divine worship. So in serving his creator and worshiping him, human being in fact develops his internal potentialities in order to become a perfect human being, a saintly human, a godly human. In order for human being to develop his internal potentials and transform himself into a good human being, Mevlana proclaims, Allah Almighty out of his love and mercy sent down the divine book to a human whom he chose and instructed to teach his book and explain it and practice it with, the, with his wisdom. So all the ethical and spiritual teachings of Islam as well as all of its beliefs and rituals have been given by Allah out of his mercy for the sake of human beings moral and spiritual development so that he would become a good human being. All of these God-given moral and spiritual principles and values, according to Mevlana, are vital for disciplining human being. And surely they will benefit him, provided that he accepts them and practices them wholeheartedly. For this reason, Mevlana stresses that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, insistently told us, Ad-Dinun Nasiha, religion is Nasiha. Mevlana says Nasiha is sincerity. The opposite of sincerity is unfaithfulness. And human being should show his faithfulness to his Lord. So Nasiha, sincerity, meaning to be true in friendship, in companionship not only in religion, also in social life. When you conduct your affairs, you should act with good intention and sincerity. So, Mevlana directs sometimes his critiques towards certain people who have reduced this whole edifice of religion, which has been sent by Allah Almighty for the well-being of human, humanity, you know, and uh, uh, to, uh, they have reduced this religion to a dry and static 
set of rules and regulations, do's and don'ts. And what is permitted, what is prohibited. He says, Mevlana, these are important. However, the religion of Islam goes deeper and deeper. So he goes further and, and turns his critique to certain, again, so-called educated people who regard religion as a body of like information, as a body of legal issues. So making religion a kind of fixed norms, for him it's a living reality. So instead of taking these values as, as just static norms, they are there fresh. To, to help and keep human being strong and vibrant and lively. So he says, before fulfilling your religious duties sincerely and properly, thereby becoming a pious human, a good human, you should not ask the heaven from Allah. You have no right to ask it. He says, you have to fulfill your first your religious duty sincerely and properly, then become a, a pious, good human being, then you deserve to ask Allah His favors and His pleasures. He says, nor should you seek the privilege that Sulaiman, peace upon him, enjoyed like a dominion of Solomon, without being a good human being in the sight of Allah, without deserving His grace and favor. So given that there is an end for you in this life, approaching, and so that will one day knock at your door. In this case then, you should never wish uh, that any human being be hurt. And you should never hurt any Muslim or any human heart. This is from his divan. And he continues. The edifice of Islam rests on the five pillars. Declaration of faith, prayer, almsgiving, fasting, and pilgrimage. By God, by Allah, he says, the greatest of all these pillars and the strongest and hardest, he says, is that of fasting. We, we are in the month of fasting. By Allah, the strongest and hardest of these pillars is fasting. When you get into the war with temptation, desires of your soul, you will realize how fasting is difficult. And you should remain firm and steadfast and content this temptation by saying, I would not sell fasting for cheap. So your carnal soul, you should know, Mevlana says, is like a powerful king who tries to overpower you, your heart. But fasting comes to your aid and shakes it like the leaves of a rose. As a matter of fact, Allah has hidden fasting. It is mysteries within the rest of the pillars. Fasting is as, is as, a, as secret as the night of power. And therefore, Mawlana continues, when you enter the month of Ramadan, you should rejoice, offer gratitude to Allah for letting you arrive in this special season. For those who are sad or unhappy because of the arrival of this fasting is forbidden fasting for them. They are not worthy of fasting, again from Divan. This is the amount of patience, Mevlana goes on. Patience is like cloud laden with rain, rain of blessings, like shower of blessings. And it is full of favors of Allah. That's why the Quran was revealed in this month of patience. And it is pregnant full of blessings. The month of Ramadan has, has arrived, Mevlana says, with it is light. And with it, the light of the Sultan, meaning, of course, Allah Almighty, who grants love and faith and who honors us with his love and faith in this month. It is a time to stop, therefore, nourishing yourself with the worldly food. As there is a spiritual food, 
descending from the heavens into your heart. Come on, Mevlana says, wash your hands, rinse your mouth, stop eating and drinking. No more talking, but contemplating and meditating. Silence, therefore, in this month is the characteristic of the saintly servants of Allah, who only utter words of admonition and zikr and morsels for the heart. You should know that fasting had numerous hidden merits. It grants a new life, rejuvenates the heart of the fasting person. So how astonishing fasting is. And Mevlana still goes on vigorously. If you desire to undertake a journey up the heavens like a mirage, you should know that fasting is offered to you as a mount to facilitate this journey for you. O oh, fasting person, you are a guest of Allah when you fast. He will feed you with food from the heaven. Fasting person swims for 30 days in the ocean from one direction to another. In the end, he obtains the diamond of fasting. Now, Mevlana asks, what is that diamond? Qurb ilallah. Proximity to beloved Allah. To beloved. To be with him. Of course, meaning taqwa. As the Quran specifies. Of course, the ultimate purpose of fasting is in this month to, is to attain the highest level of God consciousness, Allah consciousness. Therefore, this is the moment of self-realization. As we learn from the beautiful message of Mevlana Muhammad Rumi, let us concentrate in this beautiful month to develop self purification self realization to get more blessings and spiritual effusions of this month and as says these are the diamonds that are offered to us freely by Allah Almighty out of his love and his mercy so fasting is not simply restraining oneself you know from drinking eating deeper than that keeping yourself pure and clean externally, internally, and devoting yourself to Allah Almighty in this month. And also a self-experience and learning humility, humbleness, modesty, moderation. Assalamu alaikum.